Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 7, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it's pretty obvious that we are living in remarkable times. Astrologers have been saying that 2020 was going to be an important year, a rare year, one with heightened energy and heightened emotion and a desire to change. And we are right now in the midst of dramatic changes that are taking place. But in some ways, it is only the beginning. I've been talking about this in the decade ahead horoscope and the year ahead horoscope, and I'm looking even further ahead at 2021. What is beginning now is only going to carry more and more momentum, especially once we get into next year. But let's bring it to this week because recently the nodes changed signs and the nodes speak to our spiritual direction. And for the collective right now, they are speaking to the direction in which we desire to go, but also acknowledging what it is that we wish to leave behind. Right now, we are in the early part of an extended eclipse season. This eclipse season is going to take us right into the early part of July. And in a period between eclipses, energy is that much more heightened. The desire to recognize the spiritual lessons playing out, but also to be part of spiritual change for the collective is that much higher as well. And so... The South Node recently moved into the sign of Sagittarius. That is where last week we had a lunar eclipse taking place. That was no ordinary lunar eclipse. It was a powerful one that was speaking in conversations of tension with Mars and with Neptune. Now, before I speak more on the symbolism of Mars in a T-square with this uh, very powerful lunar eclipse, that is part of what has activated the energy of this time. Let me speak a little bit about the nodes themselves. Now, it is uh, Cornelius Agrippa who wrote the three books of occult philosophy. This text is some 500 years old, give or take. And if you have taken astrological magic classes with me, if you took the uh, Lunar Mansions class with me, you know that we talked about some of the wisdom in this book. And it is actually Agrippa who also wrote about the nodes. And this shows up in my upcoming book, The Universe is Wise and Loving. But we can think about the nodes as a part of a dragon. And so it was Agrippa who called uh, the north node the dragon's head and the south node the dragon's tail. So think about what the head represents, right? The head represents... Uh, enlightenment and rationality. It represents our, our higher characteristics, our ability to think things through, our ability to be creative. All of this is symbolized in the head and the dragon is a deeply mystical symbol, a revered symbol. Uh, we look at ancient Egypt in particular that Agrippa points to for this understanding of the transformative and creative force that the dragon represented. And it is the head that ultimately elevates that energy so that that very brilliant and spiritual and mystical and creative energy ultimately is used for its higher purpose. And that's what the North Node represents. The higher qualities of that sign come through. And so recently the North Node moved into the sign of Gemini. And this is about communication and expression and media and the ways in which we see ourselves in each other. This is the sign of the twins. This is recognizing each other as siblings, as ourselves, as mirror images to ourselves. And we're getting the higher and being encouraged to see the higher blessings of doing just that. And then we have the South Node, what uh, Agrippa considered akin to the dragon's tail. Now, what is at the base of a tail? And just about any animal that you see with a tail, normally the tail is directly above the anus. And this is a place of excretion. This is a place of excrement. This is a place of what we are letting go. 
acknowledging the poop and leaving it behind and right now we do have the south node in the sign of Sagittarius and Sagittarius is an energy of justice is is an energy of the other of the foreigner of whom it is we make other to ourselves it is an energy that has to do with uh, legal matters political matters and so with the south node here what is it that we are now seeing what is it now that we are acknowledging we're acknowledging the excrement right we're acknowledging what has been discarded what we haven't wanted to look at the dark side the ugly side we have the tail that ultimately serves when you look at an animal to protect the most vulnerable part of the animal so when an animal is cold or frightened the tail will curl under to protect the anus to protect the genital to conserve heat as well and in this way we may hold on to what ultimately our body or the body of an animal is trying to release and let go of to leave behind and so now here we are as a collective and we are being invited to look at what needs to be left behind uh, what it is that we haven't wanted to look at before what it is that has been discarded and I'm speaking metaphorically of course but it is this lunar eclipse that accelerated the desire for a more fair justice now we have that square to Mars and Pisces Pisces is an energy that is of a few different things right it has to do with self-sabotage in one way to look at it it has to do with martyrs as well and it has to do with how quickly it is that something can spread and so one very literal way to look at how this eclipse has already manifested it has to do with looking at martyrs and how that fits into where it is that there is a feeling that a part of justice is like excrement for a lot of people out there the way that they experience justice uh, has been the lower end and the lower vibration of that energy and so how do we raise that energy right now well it has to do with gemini it has to do with being willing to see ourselves and others being able to genuinely relate to others and we're seeing more of that now than possibly any time in human history and so we've had this powerful collective experience this painful collective experience that is mars mars can bring about pain it can bring about aggression it can bring about spiritual warriors as well at this time and the martyr has been George Floyd that has been part of evoking an awareness in a very powerful way evoking this awareness of the unfairness that a south node in the sign of Sagittarius is inviting us to awaken to and this is powerful but it is in some ways the beginning now another factor to take into consideration is Saturn Saturn has just stepped into the sign of Aquarius less than three months ago we started getting a little bit of a taste of this energy and very quickly with this we saw a few things taking place one was social distancing but it is Aquarius that is also interested in equality it's part of the air sign characteristic air has to do with thoughts it has to do with ideas it is a cerebral energy and in that way it is also an energy of equality it is mind and thought and communication and ideas that is the great equalizing force and this is why in cultures and in countries that have a strong signature of air energy you will see things like education being more widely accessible uh, you will see things like the ability to have social mobility for a person based on the development of mind based on the cultivation of education and so it has been Saturn in this sign that has shown us some of the limits of that uh, that has made us aware of how it is and where it is that we have been asked to stand still now there has been a literal part of that because wherever Saturn goes we welcome in an energy of restriction 
and also looking at things from a more traditional way. And so Saturn in Aquarius, on the one hand, social distancing was part of this. Aquarius is a very social energy, so there was restriction on that. And then the signs uh, interest in equality, the restrictions that are placed on that are now coming forward for us. Now, I do think that once we get to July 1st, it is going to be right around then that Saturn will leave the sign of Aquarius for a little bit of time uh, until December. And so we're going to see a little bit of easing happen at that time. But the energy is going to pick up again once we get to December. However, by that time, it is going to look a little bit different because once we get into December, it is going to be Saturn that is going to meet Jupiter in the sky. That connection happens right around the winter solstice, which is right around the 21st. Um, you want to give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. But it is going to be that very connection that we will start to feel building as we move to the middle of December and beyond once Saturn steps back into the sign of Aquarius. Well, that is when some awareness is going to come about again around the need for restriction, but also around where restrictions have been placed that are no longer working for people. But when Saturn meets Jupiter, it'll be different. That is a much more hopeful energy. That is an energy that takes uh, an idea, an idealistic way of seeing things and embodies the energy, makes it real. And so where it is that people are hoping for progress, are hoping for change, I do think that there should be some encouraging news taking place towards the end of the year. I know that right now there is the sense of social unrest and a lot of that makes a whole lot of sense given this recent eclipse, given the fact that Saturn has moved into the sign of Aquarius, even if it's just for a little bit. And we are going to see some of this energy heightened that much more as we move later into the month. However, I do think that collectively, at least there is going to be reason for calm even if just for a few months before some of this conversation really starts to pick up again. However, coming back to this week, it is going to be at the end of this week that Mars is going to meet Neptune in the sky. Now, as I said, this is happening in the sign of Pisces. That's where Mars is right now. These two planets do meet about once every two years or so. And when they do meet, it is as if Mars is bringing an accelerant energy to that Neptune. It heightens emotion. It heightens passions. But in the sign of Pisces, that much more, it can heighten compassion. But it can also heighten the willingness to put oneself out there, uh, to be swept up in a cause. And so it is going to be that much more important that people out there are practicing self-care, are taking the best of care of themselves, because a lot of us are going to continue to feel things very deeply and have reason to pay attention to things that much more. And I want you all to be careful for another reason as well. You know, as an astrologer, I'm very mindful to live in a way, to express myself in a way that I can be at peace with. That's what matters at the end of the day. And I remember many years ago, uh, an interview with the late, great Jonathan Kainer. Jonathan Kainer was a brilliant astrologer. I tried to meet him a few times, but it never came together as I would have liked. And uh, just a beautiful writer, a completely influential British astrologer. He wrote horoscopes for many decades and was uh, one of the most widely read British astrologers of his time. And he passed away a few years ago. And it was uh, Jonathan Kainer in an interview that he spoke about the fact that he had written a horoscope and someone read that horoscope and thought that it was giving him permission to commit suicide. And that person did commit suicide. And this made national headlines in England at the time as the person circled the horoscope and they wrote in their suicide letter that they were trusting this particular advice. And he said that after that, he was very careful to check 
twice, check three times, what he had written before he allowed it to be published because he wrote daily horoscopes for decades to make sure that his horoscope could not be interpreted in a way that would do harm to anybody. And that is something that I care about tremendously. I take great care because it is what allows me to be at peace with myself. I want to be sure that I am interpreted in a way that ultimately affirms love and wisdom in the world, that empowers people to believe and move towards greater love and greater wisdom. And so I'm always very mindful to point out things like how Mars in Pisces can speak to martyrs. I am not saying that you go out there and do that, okay? And it would be heartbreaking to me if that is something that transpired because of something I said, which is why I even say this with great caution. I say this with some reservation. But the fact that Mars is going to meet Neptune, I think this is going to heighten emotion, heighten passion, heighten the awareness around the martyrs that have been, and a desire for some compassion is going to be very high as well. But on a more personal level, what this energy says is that we are going to have to practice tremendous self-care because a whole lot of energy can pour out with this. Our spiritual energy, we can become spent to the point where we have nothing left to give, no more compassion to give. And that is why, because so many people are in this heightened energy and trying to figure out what to do, how to be part of effective change in the world, equal justice in the world, equal compassion in the world, a more sense of empathy and unity among all of us on the planet, that desire can take a whole lot of energy. And so all I'm saying is please, in the process, practice self-care, whatever your unique voice is going to be as part of affirming the sense of a desire for acknowledgement, for equality, please make sure that you are doing what you need to do to take the best of care of you. And this need for care is going to be highlighted, especially at the beginning of the week. We are going to have Venus speaking with Ceres in a conversation of tension. Now, Venus is in retrograde at the moment. Her energies are that much more heightened. Retrograde in the sign of Gemini. And so this is part of what is encouraging us to find love in talking to each other. Find love in what we are expressing and sharing in social media, for example. And to try to find the right way to share is a part of what I think all of us are learning as a collective, but individually as well. And it is going to be Venus that will be squaring the asteroid series. And series has to do with care and nurturance. How is it that we can share in a way that lets people know that we care? How is it that we can share in a way that not only nurtures others, but also nurtures ourselves and doesn't deplete ourselves. This is going to be part of the desire, the yearning, the motivation, part of the learning that is gonna be transpiring for us. But with Venus retrograde, remember, the love is strong. The brotherhood, the sisterhood, the brethrenhood is strong as we are beginning the week and is going to remain so, but at least for now, with this square, it is going to remind us to be mindful and that in many ways we are all learning. We are living in very rare and very special times. I have been saying the kind of sky we see right now, this was when uh, the last time we saw this sky was the Protestant Reformation. And that was a profound shift in consciousness. That was getting rid of intermediaries. That was a shift in who has the power in the world. And we are in the midst of that. When that happened 500 years ago, the last time we saw that conjunction of Saturn and Pluto in the sign of Capricorn, the last time that that happened, it wasn't just that, you know, somebody woke up and Martin Luther woke up and he had his 
theses and he just kind of stapled it to the 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 church door and that was it everybody kind of woke up and said okay this is how we're doing things it wasn't like that there was revolt there was revolution there were martyrs there was a sense of um violence right there was a sense of of a demand of passion of a resistance to give up power there was the dancing plague there was a plague going on at the same time it wasn't that everything happened in a switch now again i say this with great caution right please take good care of yourself we need you here now whoever it is that you are whatever part it is you are playing in this if you are here now it means that you have so much more to do in this lifetime and that is why you are here in this moment regardless of how it feels uh, regardless of how you may feel regardless of how much hope you feel or don't feel in this moment the fact that you are here right here right now means that you have more to do in this lifetime you've got so much more to do and I hope that you will be here to do it because as I like to remind you, my master's thesis was on the work of Ibn Arabi. His work was so deeply important to me and I remember how hard it was. That thesis was so hard. And I promised his spirit, I said, if you help me get this master's, I will talk about you. But it isn't just that pact that I made with his spirit. It is also the fact that I have been changed as a result of learning about Ibn Arabi's work, his mystical astrology, as it's been understood. And it is Ibn Arabi who believed that we are the breath of the divine. It is a theory that he called the magnificent breath, that we are like uh, these little parts of our lungs, right? So when you think about the lungs under a microscope, it's like little trees that are inside. And when we breathe, the trees expand just a little bit. Well, it is us that comprise the lungs of the divine. And with every yearning, every sadness, every disappointment, every elation, every love, every light, every joy that we experience, it is another way that the divine experiences itself in a way that it would not have had you not been there to experience that exact disappointment and sadness and elation and joy and love. We are the breath of the divine that is ever growing stronger. With every breath you take, especially if it's not a breath that is comprised of, you know, something that maybe isn't so good for you, <laughs> like vaping or something. Um, and I'm not judging, trust me, in my own life outside of camera, I am not judging at all. I'm the last person to judge. But where it is that we are out in nature and taking a full breath, that is strengthening our lungs. It means that the next breath we take is that much stronger, that much fuller. And it means that there's more to breathe from. There are more ways that our lungs know themselves in a way that it would not have had we not been there to take that full breath, that full, refreshing, healthy, embodied breath. And in this way, your life is needed and you being here is needed because you are right now, whatever you may be experiencing, and I know a lot of people out there are experiencing sadness and powerlessness and uncertainty, and yet this is the divine living through you and has a desire to continue to live through you, to know itself in a way that it never would have had you not been here. And so in our own way, each of us is coming to this awareness of the divine expression that we are. And that is energy, that energy that, you know, Ibn Arabi called God and some people call the divine. I call it love and wisdom. And we are not the full awakened embodiment of love and wisdom. If we were, we would go on to the next thing, whatever the next realm is. But we are learning 
to embody love and wisdom more fully. And that doesn't mean being passive. That is the last thing it means. Love is very strong and the spiritual warriors do exist, but it's how you choose to embrace the spiritual warrior and live it out. That is, and that involves self-care, that involves self-knowledge, and that is gonna be part of the lesson and the learning that we all are in our individual journeys coming into this week. Now, it is gonna be right around Thursday that the sun is going to speak with Neptune in a conversation that astrologers call a square. This is a conversation of tension. And these two planets speaking in this way can speak to uncertainty. It can speak to questions and disappointment. And it can speak to illusions. And right now the sun is in the sign of Gemini. And what this suggests is that information, whether it's the news, whether it is what we're talking about, whether it is not believed, whether it is not accurate, uh, whether it is that we are being presented with an illusion, whether it is it's not honest, or it's possible that with the best of intentions, the information that is being received um, was thought to be accurate but is not accurate. These are the types of situations that can show up at this time. So it is that much more important to be mindful and also to be mindful of how we are communicating. What is it that we are giving power to? Again, going back to my classes in astrological magic, I talk about Plotinus. Actually, tomorrow on Sunday, when you're watching this possibly, Sunday afternoon, EST, I'm going to be teaching with ESAR. Uh, they have a, a series, a lecture series every Sunday, and I'm going to be teaching astrological magic with them. I taught astrological magic uh, recently with Norwak, um, and this is one of my more popular classes, actually. I, I taught it uh, also with Kaipacha's event, Astrology Rising, and of course on SynchronicityUniversity.com as well. And so in the introductory class, I always talk about some important thinkers in astrological magic. One of them is Plotinus. And Plotinus uh, is a very important occultist uh, as part of understanding where we are. Uh, he lived about 2000 years ago. And one of his more important distinctions was that you can come to the moment of your ritual with all of your correspondences, right? You can have all the right tools. You can come together at the right planetary hour, at the right uh, angelic hour, because he was really big on uh, petitioning angels. Uh, you can gather your correspondences, which means you have your incense, you have the right color candle, uh, you have your right stones, all the things that you need in order to have your ritual be successful in what it is you choose to manifest as you engage in astrological magic. But until you speak the word, it has not manifested. And as soon as you speak the word, it has already manifested. And when we look at spiritual traditions, so many spiritual traditions talk about, again and again, they talk about how the universe was created through sound. That sound is ultimately the beginning of how all manifestation occurs. In the Bible, it says, in the beginning there was the word. Um, in the Hindu tradition, they talk about the sound Om being the sound that created the universe and all of existence. And we see this idea come up again and again throughout many different traditions. And so with this square of the sun to Neptune, it becomes that much more important that we be mindful of our own words and what it is that ultimately we are creating in the process because words themselves are part of manifestation. And my hope is with the sun in Gemini squaring Neptune that we bring about greater awareness and greater intention behind the words that we choose to speak to others and to speak to the universe, but also to speak to ourselves. 
it is going to be so important to ensure that we are speaking to ourselves in the most kind and gentle ways possible. That connection of Mars and Neptune is uh, very strong, but it is also an energy of inspiration, an energy of spirituality. It is an energy of miracles. And so where it is that we are willing to give ourselves to, plugging into source, being inspired, creating from a place of inspiration, where it is that we are committed to love and wisdom and compassion, that is when we strengthen the best that this energy can be, which is absolutely miraculous. What I love about this week for us, it is of course that meeting of Mars and Neptune and my sincere hope that we tap into it for the best potential that it can be. Ultimately, this is an acceleration of Neptunian energy. Neptune is God of the seas and like the seas, the tides can come in and the tides can go out as well. There's no middle ground with this energy. It's all in or not. And my hope is that we tap into this for the inspired and magical and miraculous turnarounds that can happen at this time. What it asks is our intention. What it asks is our focus and our sincere desire to bring compassion and an expanded heart, our sincere desire to plug into source and to operate from that space can ensure that we are agents for genuine transformation, the kind that'll change history. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have books, of course, as I mentioned, The Universe is Wise and Loving has a official cover now and I will put it up somewhere here so that you can see it. Um, this book, the advanced sales are now closed, but it will be available wherever books are sold August 22nd. And I'll give you more information on that in the weeks ahead. Of course, my other books that are already available for sale include The Body and the Cosmos. Uh, this is uh, taking some ideas from Plato's Timaeus and applying it to an astrological sky. Prayers to the Sky, which is my most recent book, which has been so hugely successful. Thank you so much to everybody who's purchased this. Thank you to the people who are leaving reviews on Amazon that really is so helpful. Your positive review uh, really does help the book so much. So Prayers to the Sky uh, is astrological magic light is how I like to understand it. But the subtitle is to know and to love the astrological planets more deeply. And of course, my first book, Astrology Realized, is available in English and Spanish. And that is a, a beginner's guide to understanding uh, astrological chart reading. And it also has, the first part is the historical development, the philosophical development of astrology. So I hope that you absolutely love those. And thank you for the love and support that my books have gotten. I have classes coming up, Synchronicity University. The summer school is right around around the corner and that is going to be a whole lot of fun. Summer school starts in two weeks and just before summer school starts you can still get choose your own tuition rate and because of the times that we're living in of course I'm also offering uh, partial and full scholarships to some people. A small number of scholarships are going to be available. So whether it is that you would like to choose your own tuition and pay as little as five dollars a class which is really unheard of in astrology and in astrological circles but i love making my classes accessible to as many people as possible 
or whether it is that you would like to apply for a partial or full scholarship, go to synchronicityuniversity.com and you can do just that. It is going to be this coming Saturday that I am going to have, or it's actually the coming Sunday that I'm going to have a special class on the nodes. Now this class is a part of the free gifts that went out for people who ordered the um, advanced copy of the universe is wise and loving but it is also available for sale you can get a class pass and this is going to look at what the nodes changing signs recently means for us as a collective but also what it means for your sign as well so not only are we going to talk about the collective but we are also going to look at each sign and we're going to go through the signs so that you can understand how this may speak to you so i hope that you love this class and if you haven't already signed up if you haven't gotten the advanced copy of the universe is wise and loving but you want to attend this class links are in the description below and finally you can get insights into your natal chart by my wonderful partnership with Cosmogram. So Cosmogram and I have teamed up. I have written uh, these explanations of all the possible chart combinations that exist between the different planets. And what happens is you go to the Cosmogram site, you order your chart, and within hours, you will get a PDF uh, that explains to you what is happening in your birth chart and what that means for you. And this uh, natal chart reading has gotten so much wonderful feedback. Uh, there's been wonderful energy, lots of positivity around this, and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you to all of you who have ordered because a lot of people have ordered this and that does mean a lot, your trust in my interpretation of the sky. This was a whole lot of hard work and it very much was a dream come true. And so I'm really grateful to Cosmogram for being a partner with me in this. And yes, it is my take on your birth chart and the planets in your birth chart. So if you wanna learn more about that, uh, link is in the description below and thank you thank you so much for being here thank you for being a part of my spiritual journey and uh, affirming what it is that i have to share for being part of the reminder of love and wisdom in the world and even this moment is a reminder of that as well we are on the precipice of big changes and it is just the beginning i will say it is going to be 2023 2024 as Pluto steps into Aquarius that we really are going to shift into a brand new understanding and a whole different world than we know right now. When we get to the end of the decade, the world is going to be a very different place, a place that feels a lot more honoring of equality in ourselves and each other. And equality is something that I'm so deeply committed to, and it is actually a big part of the motivation behind everything that I do. And I'm looking forward to that. I am really looking forward to uh, Pluto in Aquarius, trine Uranus in Gemini. That's happening 2026, 2027. And I know that that sounds far away, but you blink and we are going to be there. And as much as this is a time of transition and there is sadness and there is pain that we are acknowledging that has been there, that is there right now in our brothers and sisters. We are learning to listen to each other. We are learning to see ourselves in each other. And this is the first step to getting to that new understanding of ourselves and our understanding of each other. In the larger picture, in the larger arc of history, we are moving towards greater love and greater wisdom and this moment is a part of it and my hope is that we are willing to glimpse the mystery that is getting us there thank you again for watching it'll be a great week enjoy